Hi, it's Marcy. I hope you're doing well. Today I'm going to start my series of making a small journal, uh, one signature, a single signature for the love hop for the groups um, from That's Just Penny. Uh, the groups that this will be taking place, I will leave links below. It's the Junk Journal Corner and the Art Bible Journaling group. In the Junk Journal Corner, um, there'll be um, prompts and, and things uh, that are just, uh, you know, uh, secular. And then in the Art Bible Journaling, it will be scripture-based. So you can join one or the other or both, whichever you like, and you will get my, you will have access in those groups to my principles for this, uh, and also uh, by Penny and uh, possibly other artists and designers. Um, but my, this, this, uh, <clears throat> these pages will be available only in those two groups. So I showed you in my last video what they look like, but I'll show you again. There are um, two different things on each page. There's a, a vintage floral pattern and then something plainer on each page. And you can, some of these pages you can just, it doesn't really matter which way you put up because it's going to look okay. They don't really have enough up or down. Um, but a few of the pages do like this page is, is clearly going to be, this is the top because the numbers and the stems, the flowers. And this one could work either way. Okay. And this one, um, you could do it the other way. I suppose you'd have to cover up the word cash or trim that off it would look okay. I think the the damask pattern does look better this way, but it, whatever. And uh, this one, I guess, I mean, you could do it this way if you want to imagine that these these flowers are, are hanging down from the stem, but uh, I think it looks better this way. So some of them don't really matter. Now, on the back, I have printed, so just so you understand, this these are free, okay, in the group. What I printed on the back is not a free set. These are from my shop, and um, you can print anything you want on the back, or you could leave them white, or you can, you know, do whatever you want. Um, color them, dye them whatever but I like I like the coffee dye look and I don't like the mess and I don't like the smell I love coffee but just for some reason coffee dyed paper the smell of it makes me sick I just can't stand it and then the whole house smells like that for days and I just um, possibly tea dyeing would be better I don't know I haven't tried that but you know, digitals are so easy. I do 99% digitals anyway. So print whatever you like on the back of yours. Or like I said, you can, you know, do them whatever way you like. Now, <clears throat> uh, sometimes I see in the groups people say, I don't know how to print double sided on my printer. Okay, well, here's the thing every printer will print double sided if you. Just put the paper back in and print on the other side. You don't, it just, it's not complicated. A lot of times I think people make it more complicated than it is. What you, what you just need to do, I mean, when they say my printer doesn't print double printed, they mean the printer is not programmed to pull the paper back in and do the second side all by itself. And that's okay. My printer isn't either. My printer is an Epson Echo Tank. And it feeds from the back, so here's the here's the back, and it has a tray, and it and it sits in the printer like this in the printer tray, okay. 
So imagine these papers. <clears throat> and it prints it in and it goes through the printer like this and it comes out and it's face up. Not all printers do that. I have another printer. Uh, it's a black and white. It's a, it's a, a, um, my, my Epson is an inkjet, the Echo Tank. And I have a, a laser jet, an HP, that, um, is a, yeah, it's a laser and it prints, prints only black and white. I use that for correspondence and whatever. And it has a tray in the bottom and it sits, a paper sits in there like that. And the paper fits through the printer like this. And it comes out with what you just printed on the underneath side because it makes this kind of a... So what you need to just do is observe your printer. Watch it pull a page through and see what happens. If you're still not sure, on the page that's facing up, either up in the tray like this or up in the tray like this, what I mean facing where you can see it, the, the side that you can see when it's lying there, sitting there in the printer, ready to print. And you're still not sh really sure, so so go in and with a pencil, just make some marks on it. Just like, say, face up, top left, top right, bottom left, bottom right. And when it comes out, see, you know, what has happened to those that orientation. Is it fitting through like this? Is it fitting through like this? Just observe and see what's happening. Now, when you want to print on the back, so what I do, okay, here, it, it printed through like this, okay, I came down and went like this, and it's sitting there, all printed, all pretty. I want to print on this side. Now, if what I want to print on this side has no up or down, or this one has no up or down, it doesn't really matter how you put it back in, just as long as you turn it over. So let me find one that I, I have white in the back. Just a second. So you see what I mean. This is say, this is our page that we just printed out. Came out of the printer like this. And now I want to do something on the back because the back is white. In my printer, if I want to make sure, actually my printer comes out like this, I think comes out of my printer like this. So I'm, I'm standing over here and the controls and the printer is like, and this is the top. My top of the, my landscape page is on the left. I know that. Here's, here's the front of the printer, me standing here, paper tray back here. And my top of my landscape page is over here. I know that, I just know that. You don't maybe know that about your printer. Observe again, okay? So I know that when I want to print on the back, if I want this to always be the top, and what I'm going to print on the back has some kind of pattern that it matters. I want them both to be the up of them both to be here. I need to put it back in the printer, flipping it long ways and coming out this because that's going to be the top. See what I mean? Just think it through. You, you'll, you'll be, you know, you can figure it out. It just, like I said, make marks on the paper. Okay, so if it doesn't matter, this the back side, because normally on the back side, I print something plain, something because I like to have fancy pages and writing pages in my journals. Especially when we're doing this love hop where we're going to do journaling. We're going to write in this journal, okay? Um, so, theoretically, we're going to write in it. So, you know, I want to have a lot of place for writing. That's why I do um, on a lot of my sets and my freebies. I, have, I do lines where you can actually just write. But anyway, this was last month's freebie. So if you didn't get it last month, uh, January's freebie, if you didn't get it, it's still available. So go to my 
previous video and it's called winter song anyway so <clears throat> if I want to print just whatever on the back it doesn't matter I'm just gonna put it back in so that I know that it's gonna print on this side because my printer goes like this now say we're doing a, a situation where it's like my uh, my um, <clears throat> my laser jet so it it calls like this and it comes out face down well that's okay because I'm just gonna take it now and I'm gonna plop it in there with the the set that's already printed facing down because this new set is gonna get printed here and it's gonna come out facing down printing here so it's going through the machine it's getting printed on it comes out the top okay so if it matters to you, if you have two, you have front and back, two pages that are going to be both of them with a design that has a top and a bottom, then um, you need to figure out what's happening. Where's the top? Mine's on, mine's on the left. Okay, here's my, here's, so essentially here's, you know, we're at the front of the printer and I know that up on mine is the left. Okay, up being the landscape pages for journals. Observe yours and see what, what's going on. If you're going to print on the back something that doesn't have an up or down, who cares? Just figure out what's going to be the top, get it printed on the top. Okay? Which is your back, actually. I hope I'm not confusing you. Anyway, I, I found that the best way to, to figure this out is look at your printer observe what's happening as the pages are pulling through and figure out what's happening and make note of that and even just you know write one up write on a piece of paper and and stick it somewhere above your workspace so that you can always refer to that okay so the next thing we're going to do we've printed on the back of our papers on our pages now we're gonna plan the orders of the pages in our signature. <clears throat> so, um, what I mean by that is, uh, we'll do the cover in a minute, okay? But how do we want, let's fold these. Let's fold them in half, and then start playing around with the order. Look at these nice and creased with the bone folder later. We just wanna figure out what kind of order we want our pages to be in. I trim, if you have, if you don't have, uh, if your printer doesn't do borderless printing, that's okay, mine doesn't either, as you see. I trim later. I used to trim them ahead of time. And then as you, when you put them in the signatures, you gotta trim them again anyway, and you'll see why in a minute. So I just do that all later. I just do that all in one shot. I don't mess with it at the beginning. First of all, I just want to figure out the order of my pages. I'm folding some of them so that the coffee dyed is on the inside and some of them so that the coffee dyed is on the outside. But I can always change that. Just fold it the other way. Not a problem. So, this doesn't have to be an exact science either. Um, you know, just as long as you have it more or less straight, it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to trim top, bottom, and the lead, the, the side, the side where you're turning the pages. So we're going to trim those anyway. Okay. So I got some of them going in and some of them going out. <clears throat> now I want to decide which one do I want for my first page when you open the cover, what it's going to be. I like this one a lot. Now, as you're doing this, if you have pages that have a, an obvious top or bottom, you're going to have to take note of that. I like this one a lot, too. But if I make that the first, it's going to go this way. And I really like it this way better. So, I'll just leave that on the inside. Another thing that might be important to you is the, the very middle when the journal is open and lying flat. You might want to just make it a point there to 
have the one you'd like the best as a cool page spread because your signature is going to be sewn here and this will be the middle. I don't particularly care for this as a center spread, so let me find, I, I like this as a first page and a center spread. What do I want? What do I want for my center spread? Well, that's pretty. Hmm. I might actually like this one or this one. Let's do this one. So this is the first page as you, you know, here's going to be the left side. Here's going to be that inside of the cover. And this is going to be my first actual journal page. So this is my first page and I want this to be my center spread. So I'm going to put those aside. And now I want these. So when you're opening them, because none of these are going to be full page spreads. That's the one in the middle. So I just need to make sure they're all facing up and I like them to alternate. And this meaning that um, I like to have a fancy page and a writing page next to each other. So let's see if we can get that done with this. And then this one will go this way. Let's see what happens. So here's my center spread. <clears throat> here's my very first page. And now let's see what this looks like. Again, we're going to have a cover, but for the moment that doesn't matter. So here's when I open up my journal. On this side I have my cover, inside of the cover in here. Let's see if I like this. Well, that's okay because here I can put other papers. I'm going to add other papers here. I just first want to make sure that they're all going the same way as far as up, top and bottom. What I don't like is have two facing pages with different patterns, different floral patterns on them. I don't like that too much. It's just too busy for me. Wow, lots of, see I put a lot of the, the pattern ones on this side. So here I have a lot of the copy day, but that's okay because we're gonna, we're gonna do a fair more, but I do wanna change and put something, one of the pages over here, hang on. I'm gonna fold one of the pages the other way. This one, yeah. So here, I'm gonna do this one and fold it this way. It's still the top because my stems are on down. So this is my center spread, right? I have a print, I have a pattern here, no pattern. Pattern. Mm. No pattern. To pick it up a little bit. Now let's try that and see how that looks. So, <clears throat> first page, second page, third page, third lay full page spread. I mean, okay. Fourth, fifth. This is more interesting because you got something, not all just copy dyed. And again, if you want to print, uh, you know, we could actually just print the same exact thing on both sides because you're gonna, you know, it gets all sorted out anyway when you, just make sure that the tops are all, when you have a, this is, oh, see this, I don't like that. Where you have two patterns. But actually, you know what, this is, this is a kind of a neutral backgroundy kind of thing, and this is some more of a, so that might be okay. I might actually not mind that too much. Okay, let's just do that because I don't want to mess with it too much. So here we go. Okay, so this is what I want. Now, I also want to add some book pages and whatnot. So, let me grab this and I'll be right back. Okay, so I pulled out some, uh, just a variety of book pages and whatnot. There's a, a map. 
This is from a what could I just mess with all? Look at that off. But anyway, um, this is from a a planner, you know, like a printer planner that you they give away. The banks here give them away or used to every year. Like at Christmas, so you have a new planner for the next year. Um so these are just from different language uh, books, books in English and then Italian. Some of them are torn out, just torn out, you know, single page torn out. And some of them are a signature, I mean, um, a folded page from a signature that was pulled out with everything intact. So you still have, so these are neat because you got you know, to put in your signature. However, um, you want to reinforce these. See how this is kind of damaged? And if you could feel the paper is just a little bit brittle. So what I do with these, I'll show you, is I reinforce it, but only on one of the edges, because if you reinforce it on both, it gets really stiff. Of course, depending on what you use. I just use plain old paper masking tape. Um, let me find some. Here we go. And just make sure it's wide enough to just give you a little bit on each side. And you're just gonna, when it's centered more or less, it doesn't have to be perfect, more or less centered on that fold. Well, see, it happened. It wrinkled. That's okay. And now we're just going to tear it off. And we'll trim that. <coughs> Excuse me. Just burnishing it with my fingernail. Pull it off. And then we'll just trim that. You could also fold it in. I think I will just because see how the page is a little bit damaged here. So I'll just trim off most of it and fold the rest in. That's going to protect that edge. So now I can sew this into my signature and it doesn't matter that there's damage to the... Because when I pulled this out of its binding, you know, it was all sewn in so wherever it was sewn, if, if I put any stress on that. The paper, it's vintage, you know, so. Now, I just fold it back the way it should be. <coughs> Find the fold, put it back how it was. Give it a little crease with the so you know, I could do this better later with the bone folder if I want. And again, I'm going to trim it all later. So it doesn't matter. See, this is, um, well, actually, it's just perfect because it's, it's almost exactly the size of my, so I'm only going to lose just a little bit when I cut these others down. Now, where do I want it? I want it here because I like to break up this, you know, two really plain pages like that of spread. Let's put it in here like this. Oh, that's nice. I like that. So, yeah, I like the colors, the contrast. Okay. And that's fine because these are going to get decorated anyway. You're going to get pockets or whatever. Stuff glued down. So this is good. I like this the way it is. I want something here. Let's get something. Up. Oh, this is like a ledger. So it's, that's kind of cool how that looks. And these are, these are damaged, but they're still, you know, and I could because I don't really like the this color against this one, but I do have washi tape. You could do it with washi tape. Let's find some washi tape. 
Let's see if we have something that will look good there. Okay, here's my washi. Oh, box of wash. Let's see what we got. Anything kind of, like, this is kind of a pinkish. Oh, this is cool. Look at this. It's like a grid, pink and white. It looks so cool with that. I love that. It's kind of narrow. Might be better to do something like this a little bit wider. Also, because this is like a, a more sticky kind of, this is a little kind of more paper kind of, and it doesn't, you have to glue it sometimes to get it to really stick. Let's try this, um, <coughs> excuse me. You know, when I first wake up, I don't know about you, but my, <coughs> gotta clear my throat a lot. I should probably have a drink of water. We'll do that in a little bit. So, let's get our tape started. Okay. Um, get this out of the way. I don't want to stick it down to that. Let's do this. There's a lot of damage there, but, um, I can stick something in the piece of paper there. The same, the same stuff. I just end it on another piece. Handy glue stick. I have glue sticking out on the other side, but that's okay. The glue stick, you can just kind of wipe it off when it gets places you don't want it. I'll mend this and then I'll glue down any edges that are sticking up. So I'm going to use this line here kind of as my guide. Be nice and straight. More or less. Okay, this is junk journaling. It's not an exact science. Junk, okay? <laughs> so there. Here we go. So that's mended. And these I'm just going to cut off flush. I don't want it to be folded over to the other side. <clears throat> I want to put something there because it's going to be a problem. Sticking to itself every time you open and close it. So, wipe that off. And just stick a little piece there. junk journal people no, it's just paper okay now <clears throat> go back and stick this those edges up and then I'll lift it up and stick it down with wick to dry hello okay Um, there's not going to be lifting up. So now I'm going to fold it. There's already a crease there, so it just should be easy enough to, I guess, naturally going to want it back the way it was. That's pretty straight, and I'm good with that. <coughs> I'll just glue these edges down. If you're going to cover it up, with, put, a, put a bucket there or stick something on it. You don't even have to worry too much. But I, since I don't know yet what I'm going to be doing here, I'll just stick it down so it doesn't bother me 
while I'm constructing my journal. Okay, I don't get it cut anything and rip it or, you know, disasters can happen. This thing about junk journal disasters is you can usually fix them, cover them up with something. Okay, see how that did? It's like wanting to pooch out the piece, the piece that I I need my bone folder. There you go. Because that's wanting to, this piece here was wanting to pooch, pooch out into the, when I folded it. Let me see if this is nice and flat. Okay, more or less. That's good. Okay, so now here we got a page. Let's see where we want to put it. Oh, we were going to put it with this, aren't we? Yeah. Cause I just like that, that pink with pink kind of thing. This is from an old journal. Did I already say that? Because you can see that it's in um, Italian, English, I don't know. And Spanish. One of these might be French. One of these is probably French. And one looks like maybe Dutch or Swedish. Or I don't know. Anyway. I only speak. Well, there's German there too, I think. Whatever. I, um, these are probably the, the six major. European languages, so <clears throat> English, Italian, English, French, and Spanish, and I don't know what else. So. This kind of makes it interesting. See how, okay, now when I was telling you before, we're going to have to trim the pages anyway. Have you ever noticed? Maybe if you're new, maybe you haven't noticed. When you put pages in, in a signature, because the more you get in here, the more the inner pages are getting pushed out. The edges are no longer flush. Here's my center spread, okay? And when it's laying flat, they're all the same. See? But when it's folded, those inner pages stick out more. So what I do is, after I sew it into the, well, not after I sew it, uh, <clears throat> I do the cover. I sew it into the cover last in my, in my, my process of putting together signatures, sewing them into the cover is the last thing I do. And then I go and decorate, but whatever. Um, the construction of the signatures I will, just before I sew them into the spine, the, yeah, into the spine, I trim, anyway, I'm going to trim this off, I'm going to trim this off, and I'm going to trim these all so that they are flush, so that, you know, when you have a book, it's the same thing. If they have signatures, look at signatures. See this? They've prepared the signatures ahead of time and then they put them all together. This is a, a special, this is book binding actually. And it's put into a press. And then they're all trimmed. Because otherwise, if they weren't trimmed, Before the trim, this is what they look like. That's what signatures look like before the trim. I use a guillotine cutter. Chopper. It chops the pages. I can't, I can't show you.
can't show you as I'm doing it because my trimmer is too big for my workspace for the camera. The presentation this is my staging area, whatever I go for filming, and and I use this kind of cutter. Shh. This is going to cut several thicknesses together all together. This is a guide. It's, it comes up and it holds the paper down and they chop. The paper goes here, chop. Okay. This is a magnet guide, so I put it. But I can't I can't film this. It's just too much too complicated. I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> I like I like this so far. I think I'm gonna put maybe just a couple more book pages in here, but not too much because otherwise my signature my signature is gonna get all alligator mouth. What I mean by that is you know it will never close flat. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be more or less flat because I'm gonna write in this journal for the love hop. I'm gonna be writing stuff in it. So, eh, this needs something. But, I don't want another full, you know, big one like that. I'm going to take a page that was torn out that did not have the signature. The signature was not, um, didn't maintain that. And, you know, I just, kind of, I do kind of like this, this, this rough edge. I'm going to put it in this way. And then later, we can do something with it. Put it in like this. I think I want the, the ragged edge at the top. I don't know why, just to, But I'm gonna make sure when you have pages that are shorter, to center them. It's, I think it's best to center them. Or you could actually get it so that you know that when I sew this in, because I'm going to do a, a three, <clears throat> so I'm going to do a, a three hole pamphlet stitch. So the first one is going to be about here, the, first, the second one will be in the middle, and then the so I want it to catch at least twice because if I put it, this one, if I put it right in the middle and I do only a three hole, it's only going to get cut there and it might kind of wobble in the signature. So I'm going to put it down here so it gets cut at least twice in the sign. And so I like that. And now here we need something too. Um, what if we do one of these lines? What if I had some grid paper? Oh wait, wait, wait. We have that map. Where's the map? Map. It's over here. And it's over here. Here it is. Here's the map. Oh yeah. We'll put the map in there. That's cool. But we gotta do something about this. I'm gonna go I'm gonna go cut it down. We'll take off part of Kazakhstan so that we got a stretch here. I'll be right back. Okay, so it's straight now. I just decide which one I want. I think I want Europe on the inside. And, oh, well, this is also, this is Africa. And this is Eurasia and Africa and Australia. Well, this is a more of a close-up of Europe. And uh, the Americas. We'll just be in this, it doesn't really matter. Do they really even care? I don't think it's that important. Just to give interest, you know. I guess junk journals should have a little bit of junk in them at least. I used to, my first journals were all, they were so perfect, so beautiful, all digitals. But then I just decided I'd like, I'd like to have some junk in my junk journals. So I started collecting vintage books and whatnot. Okay, this is enough. It's getting kind of thick because you got to think about, you know, where you got in, you're going to put in pockets, 
and tags and envelopes and decorate your pages and whatever. It's gonna get bigger. So this would be this should be enough for us to write in. I've got quite a few pages here. And you know, if you don't want all of this, you don't want to write, so you want to write here, you could cover it with another piece of paper or even better, you could just use gesso. The artist gesso. Have you ever used that? I'm talking about artist gesso, the, the stuff they use to prepare a canvas before they paint it. Like a primer, okay? It comes in white, it comes in black, it comes in clear. I have, this one is white. It's just not much left, but you just gesso it. We'll do that too if I remember. Okay? Do some of that. But not today. So because today is just doing the signature, so um so we figured out the front and back of the pages on our printer. We printed we plan the order of pages in a signature, we got that. Oh, now we're going to plan a cover, and um, then we're going to trim edges. And then we're going to sew a signature. Now, I might not do this all today, okay, actually. But we'll at least get started, so. I do have other stuff that i got to get done today. So, here we go. I like this. It's thick enough. Let's put away our extra book pages. Our jump pages. And get them out of our workspace. Now, um, so I planned everything. Oh, let's just check one more time. Are they all pointing up the same way, the right way. Here, I don't care about this, I'm gonna just wait. But I care about the, the pages that I'm gonna leave. Okay, top, good. Top, good. Top. Don't matter. Going the right way. Center spread. We're good to go. Um, let's check these just, you know, be scrupulous and double sure. Maybe should all be okay. Okay. We're good. We are good. So here's a signature. It's ready to go. It's ready to trim and sew into a cover. Sure, we're nice and creased. Okay, we're good. Now I'm gonna put some binder clips on it. I'm also going to put a little piece of sticky note on it to indicate. indicate well, that was brilliant. Okay. The top, so I don't mess up. And my, these are my handy dandy binder clips. I love these binder clips. I use these clips whenever I'm binding. Now, I know for a fact that my trimmer is not going to do all these thicknesses. So what I'm going to do is take about half of it. I know it'll do three pages. It supposedly does ten, but of course that's going to depend on the how many, you know, the weight of the paper, the thickness of the paper. You know, I use 100 gram paper for my pages because 80 grams is, uh, sorry, I don't know the pounds. You can look it up on Google, figure out the, the conversion, but 
um, 80 grams is what the, the cheapo copy paper is, and I don't like that. This is smoother. It's 100 grams. It's very nice weight. I'm going to trim this now, and then I'll come back and put it in this other one. I'll show you what happens, okay? Right back. <clears throat> okay, so I got the side of my first three pages cut. I didn't do the these others yet. I'll just do that in a minute. So go and, go and do that now, okay? Okay, and I've turned this one. Now, when you come back with another part, check again. You got to see it's upside down. So I'm just going to flip it over. And now it's right set up and it's going to go inside this one. This is where I got it from, right? Nice smooth edges. Okay. I don't mind if the inner part is smaller than the outer part. I just don't like it when they, the inner ones stick out. If you don't want to mess with all this, you know, trimming and getting it done, it's very confusing for you, maybe you're a beginner. Um, you can just put strips of lace down the edges that, to make them all even. I've done that before. I used to do that all the time when I was, uh, when I was new. At junk journaling. See? To make all the edges straight, even, more or less even, or not even, you can't even tell, who cares, you know, if they're not, because they're all lacy and pretty and I like that they're not perfectly straight. So you just decide what's right for you, okay? What's right for your junk journal, the way you want it to look. If you're happy, everybody should be happy. Now, here's the last cut page, and these need to be cut. I'm going to leave this out for a second because I don't want it to get tangled up in all this mess. And this is my guide for cutting the last few pages. And I will be right back. Let's cover up the glue stick. It's going to get dried out if we don't. Okay. Be right back when I cut these. Okay. I'm back. Where was this? This went like that. It was here. Okay. Check, Marcy. Make sure the top is still the top. Yes, it is. Okay. Because when you know that's when you pull them out and move them around, that's when sometimes you get things going wrong. Okay. Um, I love this. It's nice and smooth. They're pretty. And if you get really uneven ones where like I'm seeing that this outer one is quite a bit bigger than the rest of these that's okay I like to put tabs anyway or lace like I said so so this is good let's um let's put it together let's go figure out a cover and we'll sew it in Okay, so I found this piece of a file folder that I had previously cut to make something else. It's kind of messed up down here, but that's okay because I think it's going to get trimmed off anyway. I like the cover to be slightly larger than the signature. Let's just make some marks here so that I can... Take it to my trimmer and would like it here. 
and here approximately okay I'll cut it down okay so I get it trimmed down I kind of like this kind of dark pink against this these, these roses look great with it. We'll cover that all up with layers of something and lace. Paper and fabric and lace. This is nice. This is a little bit messed up. I don't just put a strip of strip of lace there. Now, the question is, do I want to leave these? You know, at this point, you could round those corners if you want. I think I'm gonna leave them um, like this because if I put lace, yeah, I'm gonna leave it like that. Now we're ready to sew. So again, I just I'm, I'm you know crazy about this. I I just me nuts to have a page going the wrong way. So we'll check them one more time before I sew them in. Are they tops all up to the top? Looks like it. So I should be good to go. Okay. So get them all centered into the signature. Looks like some of these I did a better job of cutting them than others, but that's okay. I'm not worried. Now with it a bit like this and if you have a cradle some people have these cradles for book binding. But I want it in this position. Clamp it. So that I know. It's not going to move while I'm sewing. Tools for sewing, and I'll be right back. Okay, I have my little box with all of my pink things in it fabrics and trims and whatnot. And I have also my threads, all the pink threads for let's dig everything out here. One second, pinks and reds in this box. Pinks and reds. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. That would be great for the cover. Um, okay, so I have this. And this pink. This one I started. Oh, do I like this? Yeah, this one's good. We can do this. Or do I like this one better? Are they the same? I think this one might be a little bit dark. I think this is a little bit brighter. And it goes better with the cover. I think I'll leave this one. Yeah, we'll use that. <coughs> Fabrics and laces are going to be fun for doing the layering of the cover. So when I go to sew, because I want to have a little bit left, the, the, the middle of the, the knot is going to, the final knot is going to go there, and I like to leave it dangling a little bit. Okay. So two dangles plus one. Two. I used to be three, but 
just too much. I ended up with blood stick. Lots left. But that's okay because then I have stuff for my scrap. My scrap pile. My scrap container. Now I need my my darning needle. Yarn darner. Whatever you want to call it. It needs to have an eye big enough. That, that will go through, but not so big that it's going to make humongous holes in my signature. Some people use a crop, but I alter to their signatures. I do not have one. And so far, I have not had um, reason to buy one. That it could justify the price. Because here, in Italy, when I buy anything, I've got to remember one thing. That might work. <clears throat> that's that's a cross stitch. It's an embroidery needle. I can't find my big needle. Is it? Where are you? I have obviously moved some things around. Oh, I remember where it is now. I put it somewhere special. So that's why I can't find it. You know, when you put things somewhere special, oh, this is the perfect place for it. You never find it again. Because I need another tool as well. I need my awl, which is just my, I made this from a needle and a, a, um, a drawer pull that was just lying around, had no reason to be here. And I put my hand, uh, this is my thing, my little cushion for poking and I stuck the nails in there. So I think I want this one because this is not a really heavy thread. This one's for bigger ones. I just want the hole to be more or less what the, the thread needs and not more than that. Anyway, I was saying is so here in Italy, all of my craft spot, there is no craft store anywhere near where I live. If I can't get it like at a dollar store or whatever, that type of a store, I have to order it in. Um, OD. Sewing notions, sewing notions I can get because we do have stores for that. Oh, laces, but they're very expensive. I usually order those in from China anyway. Um, so, you know, like I was saying, the crocodile is very expensive because you have to pay shipping from wherever. And normally, not for a lot of things, you know, think about the, the weight of that. It's going to cost me more in shipping than the actual product. So you're talking about at least double the price of what you would pay somewhere where you have craft stores. But okay. So I, I didn't, I can't justify that. I wouldn't use it that much. And I use, I do other things. So I'm going to just eyeball it, find the mail. Looks pleasing to me. And I'm going to go through all of the, the layers of the signature and come out hopefully right in that crease. So in order to facilitate that, I'm coming out right, I'm going to squeeze it down. Here I'm pushing through, but I'm squeezing down here. So it's not going to go riding up and come out here or, you know, somewhere on the back. It's going to come out in the middle. I can, I can feel it. And, and the motion I'm using is, is like this, gently, kind of twirling it back and forth as I'm squeezing it down. Not real hard. It's just, it's, you know, I can, I want to, I can feel, I can feel the needle in there. I can feel it moving and I'm, and I'm making sure that it's, can you see this little bulge? That's where the needle's coming out. I don't go all the way through. I just go enough to where my needle's gonna pass through and I can find the hole again. I'm not gonna stick it all the way in. I don't need a hole this, this big. Okay, I'm just sticking it in about that far. You can see the hole, you can find it again with the needle. Now, <clears throat> do you remember I had that page that was shorter? Oh, rats. It's, it's worked its way up. I had it down. Well, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch this. See? I don't want my 
I don't want it to be too close here because I want it to be like somewhere around here so it's gonna catch it at least twice okay so that's that's okay I mean I can live with it being there do we care that it's not all the way down here I don't think so it's just a one signature journal it's not gonna have a lot of stress I'm gonna use this for the love hop I want to write stuff in and I may use it a little bit more than the following month and then I'm done with it and it's just gonna be there to look pretty and to read you know I like people a lot of people say well what is the purpose of a journal you know when you're writing when you're done writing in it what do you do with it I keep them when I look at them I I'll explain it in this way see coming out here I just want to make sure it's perfectly in the crease otherwise it's gonna cause me problems okay that's good I'll explain it to you like this when I was a child my mom loved to have her quiet time by herself and you know with three kids that is not always possible so she when I, when she wanted her quiet time she would give us these happy boxes she called them happy boxes it was just like a shoe box with stuff in it that we could we were only allowed to play with when it was that you know happy box time she could use boxes of stuff and then she would replenish them with it or whatever it could be stuff for coloring or new, new toys about little things just quiet things that you you could play with like little puzzle things or whatever and she called them happy boxes and they were just so cool and I loved them well see now these are not spaced evenly but do we even care I don't okay this is not about perfection it's a junk journal for crying out loud okay so these happy boxes were great because you know you keep the kids quiet for an hour you could do your thing you know, I mean, when they're little, you didn't have time to wash your hair. Come on, let's be honest. So, um, you know, and um, as, she, as we got older, she even got into, she, she actually wrote and published a romance novel. This was in the 80s. Yeah. Anyway, um, but uh, I had, I left home before that, so, um, but she had been writing for several years. <clears throat> <clears throat> so to find that time, you know, get the kids out of your hair, give them happy boxes. So, so my journals, that, as I'm making them, as I'm writing in them afterwards, when I'm looking at them, I'm just, you know, thumbing through, and that's like my happy box, you know, that's my, well, these cute little things I can look at and play with, you know, that's, I keep myself happy. <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. That's how I just think, you know. So we're going to go. We're going to sew this signature. We're going to go out through to the outside, from the inside to the outside here. So that, you know, the first stitch is going to only, I'm going to leave a little dangle. So right away, what I'm going to do is I'm going to catch this. So it doesn't go anywhere. Because I want to pull, otherwise I'm going to just pull the whole thing through. So we're going to go out here, and then we're going to come back in one of these. Then we're going to go out here again, and we're going to come back in the other one. And then we're going to go, then I'll show you. Okay, so we're going to go out. So center, and then out. Push through the hole I already made. Pull it so that it's tight, but not so hard that it's going to be buckling. Now, some people find this tricky, going back in. I like to hold it like this. My finger is right underneath this hole. But we're going to be careful. We don't want to poke ourselves. Sorry, I have to look closer. Okay, there you go. I don't want you, you know, you don't want to see the top of my head. Now, I'm gently, I don't want to poke myself, people. So what I'm just kind of trying to find that I am in the hole. And with my finger now... I am squishing these so that they're lined up. Does that make sense? So it's like this. With my fingernail, I'm 
I'm squishing the pages and this is not cooperating so I'm gonna need to see what's going on so <coughs> I see what's wrong. It's not lined up. Okay, well the video cut out. Of course, of course it did. You know, when you're doing the most important part. But here's my signature sent into the cover. Everything was all straight and neat and orderly. And I'm happy I will do another video. But not today to show you the missing steps but essentially what i did was i went out the middle in the bottom or the top back out the middle again in the other side out again and then when you're out here you can't come right back in it's just going to pop out right so what i do is i pass the needle under these two threads, imagine that the, the thread following it, okay? Because under this one and under that one. So you just made a loop with the thread and back down in. Being careful not to split the threads. So it's caught there. I don't know if you can even see it because it's pink on pink. It's very hard to see, but there's a little knot there. Went around underneath these two threads and back down in. And then it came back out. I tied my square knot like a good Girl Scout. Don't, if you don't know about square knots, just Google that. It won't come out. It won't come undone. It, with this thin of a thread, you'd have to cut it to get it back out again. But anyway. And um, I put little dangly things on here. Um, something. And I'll talk to you again. Hopefully tomorrow I can do the next part where we will start layering the cover, decorating the pages. We'll make some ephemera. This kit, kit, I just did a few pages, but when you have kits that don't include the ephemera, I'm going to show you a way that you can make your own that will perfectly match and coordinate with everything that you have. And see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.